All right, welcome back. We're going to begin part three of our atomic theory discussion. We just wrapped up talking about James Chadwick earlier and the discovery of neutrons. So we now have protons, neutrons, and electrons as our three main subatomic particles. Just as a quick re recap, um, you should be familiar with the Dalton theory of the atom. We called that the billiard ball model, if you remember. Uh, we had the Rutherford, or excuse me, for Rutherford, we had the Thomson model of the atom, which was the plum pudding model. And then we had the Rutherford model of the atom. He's the guy that discovered the nucleus, and we call that sort of like a planetary model of the atom. Um, we're going to sort of stay there right now with that model of the atom, although there is um, more things we need to cover, but for right now it helps us to understand uh, what we want to talk about today. So while working with neon, J.J. Thompson, remember the plum pudding guy, the guy who discovered the electron and the proton, observed what seemed to be two kinds of neon atoms. They were exactly alike chemically, but different in mass. Atoms of the same element that differ in mass are called isotopes. So isotopes have, let's fill these blanks in here, the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons. It's the protons that characterize an atom. Uh, so long as an atom has one proton, it will always be a hydrogen atom, for instance. However, the number of neutrons can vary. Now, as you recall, neutrons and protons have virtually identical masses. So, if I have different numbers of neutrons, but the same number of protons, the mass might change, but since the protons are the same, the element itself does not change. Here, talking about hydrogen. There are three common isotopes of hydrogen. There's protium, deuterium, and tritium. You'll notice, of course, that each have one proton. That identifies it as a hydrogen atom. However, the number of neutrons differ for each one. Protium doesn't have any neutrons. So what we call its mass number, which is the sum of protons plus neutrons, would be 1 plus 0, or 1. So we'd say protium has a mass number of 1. Deuterium has one proton still. It's still a hydrogen atom, but it also has a neutron. So its mass number is 2. 1 plus 1 gives me the 2 for the mass number. And tritium, uh, the third isotope of hydrogen, has one proton and two neutrons. And so you can see where the name tritium comes from. We have a mass number of three. Now, we have an abbreviated way to describe isotopes. For instance, um, if I write the symbol H, that's my symbol for hydrogen. In the upper left-hand corner, we write what's called the mass number. Now remember, the mass number is the sum of the protons and neutrons. In the lower left-hand corner, we write what's called the atomic number. And that alone is the number of protons. Now, if it's a neutral atom, it also becomes the number of electrons. Remember, electrons and protons have the same magnitude of charge, but opposite in direction. So positives and negatives equal each other if the atom is neutral. We'll talk later about atoms that can become ions due to the gain or loss of electrons, therefore gaining a charge. We call this isotopic notation. Well, for the three isotopes of tritium, we would have one with a mass number of 1, one with a mass number of 2, and the third isotope of tritium has a mass number of 3. So hydrogen 1, hydrogen 2, hydrogen 3, their more common names are protium, deuterium, and tritium. Now, we might also see this on the periodic table. In fact, this is exactly what you see on the periodic table. We have the symbol for an element here. So this is simply the element symbol, which you guys already know. And then the integer number, this number right here, is the atomic number. And that's the number of protons or the number of electrons. Remember, in a neutral atom, protons and electrons are the same. This number here is the average atomic mass. Now you might say, what do you mean average atomic mass, Mr. Hummer? Well, remember, there are three isotopes of hydrogen. One that has a mass of one, one that has a mass of two, and one that has a mass of three. 
So this would be the average of those. Now to find that average, we simply don't add the mass numbers together, and in this case, divide by three. The reason we don't do that is because most isotopes of hydrogen, almost all of them are protium. So the average mass is going to be painfully close to one. And if you look on the periodic table, it's 1.00794, which means there aren't very many deuterium or tritium isotopes. The average atomic mass of an oxygen atom is 15.99. Now if we round that off, that of course would equal 16, and for oxygen that would be what we call the mass number, which is the sum of the protons and the neutrons. So, looking at this description for the oxygen atom, we would say it had 8 protons and 8 electrons, a total of 16 protons and neutrons. Since we know 8 of those are protons, the other 8 must be neutrons. So the three subatomic particles, a typical atom of oxygen will have eight protons, well all atoms of oxygen will, eight electrons, and a typical atom of oxygen will have eight neutrons. So just as a quick recap, recall that the atomic number is the number of protons and the number of electrons in a neutral atom. The atomic mass is the average mass of that element's isotopes. Now, if we round this atomic mass off to the nearest whole number, like we did just a moment ago for oxygen, that also represents the sum of the protons and neutrons and is commonly called the mass number. Now, I want to go back to the calculation of average atomic mass, and I want to do an example for you. I think you might have one or two of these for your homework. Um, maybe, maybe I should uh, give you a little background information first before we do this isotope. Um, if I wanted to find the average weight for a group of students in a classroom, let's just pretend uh, that 29 of those students weigh, I don't know, 100 pounds. And one student weighs, uh, we'll say he's a big football player, okay, weighs 300 pounds. How would I find the average weight of those students? Would I take 100 plus 300 and divide it by 2 and say, oh, the average weight's going to be 200 pounds? Of course I wouldn't because most of the students weigh 100 pounds, the average weight will be closer to 100 than it will be to 300. The same is true with isotopes. The more abundant isotope, of course, that one will be the more common mass, and the average mass usually will be closest to that mass. So, let's, let me give you an example. The element boron exists as two isotopes, boron with a mass of 10 and boron with a mass of 11. Um, one consists, of course, of five protons, all boron atoms do, and five neutrons. The other one has six neutrons instead. Now, of course, the proton number stayed the same, or else it would no longer be an atom of boron. They exist in nature as 19.61% of boron-10, and the rest of it is boron-11. The experimentally determined masses of the two isotopes are... 10.0129, so that's where you get the mass number of 10, and 11.0093, that's the mass of boron 11. From this data, calculate the average atomic mass of boron. Check your answer with the mass on the periodic table, and you will note the periodic table lists the average atomic mass of all of the isotopes, not necessarily the mass of one particular atom of that element. So, taking a look at this data, don't you agree that the average mass of a boron atom will be closer to 11 because 80.39% of all boron atoms weigh pretty close to 11 and only 19.61% weigh something close to 10? So I would expect the average mass of a boron atom to be closer to 11 than 10. So this is how we do this. We will take 19.61% 
of the boron tens mass. Now to do that, I'm going to multiply by the decimal equivalent of 19.61%. That's 0.1961, and multiply it by the mass of that isotope. Then I will take 80.39%, its decimal equivalent, 0 0.8039, times the mass of 11.0093. Now when I do this, I will get 19.61% of boron's average mass and 80.39% of boron's average mass. When I add them together, I will get 100% of boron's average mass. So let's pull our calculator out quickly and see if we can do this. So 0.1961 times 10.0129 gives me 1.96 I'm going to round that off to four, right? giving myself four significant figures. So this represents 19.61% of boron's average atomic mass. Now we'll take 0 0.8039 times 11.0093, and I get 8.850. Now that represents 80.39% of boron's average atomic mass. Once again, the sum of these will give me 100% of boron's average atomic mass. So I get 10.814 as the average mass for a boron atom. Now let's check that with our periodic table. We have the one in the back of your book. We'll just flip to that quickly and we'll find the element boron. Hopefully we're able to see this okay. Um, it says it's 10.811 as the average atomic mass. 10.811. So what did we get? Well, we're off in the last digit. But that's certainly acceptable. Remember, the last digit is our uncertain digit. And uh, I feel very comfortable with this. So 10.81, uh, 10.814, 10.811 would be a good average atomic mass. Notice, neither of the isotopes of boron has that mass. Not one of them do. So there's really not, not a boron atom that weighs that much. They either weigh this much, 10.0129, or this much, 11.0093. This represents the average. Please take note, I did not add these up and divide by 2 like many of you will do. Please pay attention to the process by which I did this. Okay? All right. Now... We're going to stop right there, because I don't want to start the mole on this video. We're going to start the concept of the mole with the next video, and it's a very, very important concept in chemistry. One that at first is a bit difficult to understand, but the more we use it, the more comfort you will have with it. Make your peace with it soon. It's going to be something that we use over and over and over again throughout the year. So we're going to wait for part four to talk about the mole. By the way, it's not a brown furry creature that burrows in the ground. In chemistry, it means something considerably different. Okay, thanks for your time. Have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>